It's a beautiful spring day here in the woods in Nova Scotia. Temperatures around 17, 18 degrees Celsius. Not exceptionally hot, which is the way I like it. The flies are incredibly not too bad today and because it is black fly season, the mosquito season starting very, very shortly. I don't know what I'll attribute my good luck to, but I'll go with it. There's a few, but not as bad as it has been in the past. But it's lunchtime. I'm getting hungry. And I thought I would share a recipe with you that I've tried a few times at home, but I have not done in the woods, and that is cabbage pie. But this will be a low-carb or ketogenic version of cabbage pie. If you're interested in seeing it and seeing what it looks like and tastes like, keep watching. All right, just before we move down to the ground where I have my gear set up to prepare this meal, I just want to talk about the main ingredient of this meal, cabbage. Now, I don't know what your experience was growing up, but for me, I wasn't a fan of cabbage. I really wasn't, probably because the only meal I ever had cabbage in was boiled dinner. And, uh, you know, it. now don't get me wrong, I like a boiled dinner now, and I like a lot of cabbage. I put vinegar, butter, salt, all those things on it. Absolutely love it. But when I was a kid, not so much. I wasn't a fan of it. And the smell just seemed to stay around the house. And, and it, anyone else in the neighborhood was making a boiled dinner, you knew who, who it was because the smell just seemed to permeate not only their home, but the neighborhood around them as well. Well, my thoughts on that have changed, especially since I've started using cabbage in a number of other dishes other than boiled dinner. And this is one dish that you're thinking, how is this going to work? Cabbage in a pie. Okay. First off, it's not a pie like you would have a crust pie, like an apple pie or a strawberry pie or blueberry pie. It's not that type of a pie. This is a pie that is more like a large pancake. So you're, I am going to fry it in a pan. Kind of a unique way of doing it today. I'll show you as well. And it's going to be fried in a pan, but it will come out solid to the point of view that, you know, you cut it in slices like a pie. So I think that's where the name cabbage pie came from. The other main ingredient in this recipe is eggs. So what makes this a low-carb, low, uh, ketogenic meal? Actually, the only thing that I had to change from a regular uh, version of this meal is the flour. The regular version calls for wheat flour or whole wheat flour or white flour, whatever you want. And of course, that's not on the ketogenic diet. But I can substitute that very easily. And I had three choices. I'll talk about the choice I made as we start to prepare the meal. What about straight up almond flour? or coconut flour, or lupin flour, or any number of other different materials that are on the low-carb diet. Well, again, I'll show you what I'm going to use and how it turns out, but uh, you're going to be amazed just how easy this is to make, how well it turns out, and if you try for yourself, just how well it tastes. All right, let's get started. All right, so what I did prior to coming out today is to prep all my materials so I didn't have to do it out here in the wood. It takes, saves a little bit of time, not only for me while I'm out here, but also so you don't have to watch it. So in this bag, I have chopped up cabbage, basically, and some onion. And uh, what I'll, I'll talk about the ingredients and the amounts, but more importantly, I'll put them in the video description and, and tell you exactly what it is I'm using today. So I'm going to estimate that we have about a cup and a half of cabbage and onions. Most of it is cabbage, actually about 90% of it is cabbage, and a little bit is onions. Now, just before we go any further, here's what I want to say about the ingredients. Really, the only requisite ingredients, the ones that really, if you change them, then it's not a cabbage pie, is cabbage and eggs. So those are the only two that really are required. After that, it's kind of personal taste. Ants are not on the menu. Get out of here, ants. They can smell everything in there. So onions, if you don't like them, then you don't have to use them, of course. But it does add a nice flavor to it. So we have cabbage and onions, two eggs, which I'll be mixing up in a moment. Now, I the, the original recipe did not call for what I'm going about to show you, but I thought I would add it because, well, I just wanted to amp it up a little bit and give it some more nutrition. And what I have is some cooked ham and some jalapeno cheddar cheese, all chopped up into small pieces. So I'm going to add those two things into it as well, just to give it, like I said, more oomph, more flavor, more nutrition. And here's my flour mixture. So I've got about a third of a cup, and this is half and half lupin flour and coconut flour. Now, why didn't I use almond flour? Well, what I found in tr testing this recipe out at home is that almond flour, being a nut flour, tends to brown, almost burn, and it just looked way too dark. Uh, I don't know that it made much of a difference in terms of 
the, the uh, taste of it at the end of it. But I will tell you, if you add lupin flour, you are upping the protein and fiber without upping the carbs. So that's why I like lupin flavor. It does have a bit of a flavor, its own flavor. That's the reason I mixed it with coconut flour. Now, coconut flour has a bit of a downside. It tends to absorb a lot more liquid than the other two flours do. So I may end up having to add a tiny bit of water. We'll see as we go along. What else do I have here? I have olive oil and ghee. I just need a little bit to put in the pan when I go to cook it. I have my Sea to Summit collapsible 1.2 liter bowl. I need 1. Point, yeah, 1.2 liter bowl. I needed something big enough to mix everything up and as a mixing bowl. Now, here's what I'm using to cook it in. <laughs> um, this is a fine, something I found at Value Village. Absolutely not necessary for this recipe, but I gotta tell you, it, it actually works really well. well. I think these are made by a company called Gotham. I found this at the thrift store. It's a double-sided fry pan. I picked it up for about two bucks at the thrift store. They're not expensive to start with. I don't know if that's a ceramic or a Teflon. I think it's a ceramic coating on the inside. You can see I've been using this even over a fire and it hasn't hurt that at all to do so. But the point of these is they're for making pancakes. So you would put it on your burner, heat it up, put your pancake material in, close it down, creates like a small oven. And at some point when you're ready, you can always peek, sneak a peek, flip it over and do the other side. And that's what I've done making the cabbage pie is having used this, it works out really, really well. Now, I suppose it has other benefits and other type of cooking. So you may see this come out more often. It's basically a covered fry pan and something you can flip without a whole lot of risk of making a mess and, and dumping it over or out on the ground. So that is what we're cooking in today. Now, let's get started. What do I need? My two eggs. Let's get those cracked and into the big bowl here. So it's one in. A recipe floating around in the wind here. Two. And I'll have those in my compost bag in a minute. But a little tiny whisk, really nice for bringing out in the woods. I could have used a, a, a piece of branch here for this, but you know, having something that actually designed for it, really work. All right, so it's going to take me a minute to whip these up as best I can before I go on to adding the rest of the ingredients. So I'll just cut out the whipping until it's ready to add the other ingredients. All right, I, I probably spent another minute, minute and a half whipping it. Everything is well combined. Put that aside for a moment. Now comes the main star of the show, the cabbage. Oh, onions, quite strong smell. But uh, that's great. Okay. And uh, maybe I'll mix those through first. Now, they use, the cabbage will shrink down in size uh, as you cook it. So it's not going to be that big a meal. But you can see why I had to start out with a larger pot, collapsible pot, to mix this all up with. Put my flour in. Again, about one third of a cup. And this is where I'm going to know whether or not I need to add liquid because of the coconut flour in here. So far, so good. Yeah, I don't know. Starting to get pretty thick, isn't it? I think I'll just put a tiny bit. And what I'm putting in now is about two tablespoons of water. If you don't use coconut flour, you should not have to add the extra liquid that I'm doing right now. But coconut flour has that nasty habit of absorbing all the liquids. And sometimes that's what you want when you're putting a recipe together. You just have to allow for it. All right, I think I've got most of the flour incorporated. Mixed around, that's looking pretty good. Time to add in the ham and cheese. Get out. Everybody out, there we go. Oh, almost lost that one. Oh, probably a good time to put in some spices. Now, where is my little spice bag? It's right here somewhere. There it is. Spices are your choice. Right off the top, salt. Sea salt. No specific amount. To taste. That's the way to do this type of cooking. Garlic powder. I was going to chop up a clove of garlic, but I decided just to go with powdered garlic. Again, to taste. What have I got here? That's a hot sauce. Oh, here we go. Tex-Mex. Oh, 
my Tex-Mex is in. I'll put those back in the bag in a moment. Let's see if we can fold this all in. I think once again, what I'll do is I'll just uh, work on this until I think it's well incorporated and then we'll go on to the next step. All right, I can see that I'm working with some shadows in my fire pit here. So yes, it is fire ban season. And yes, we under a fire ban. Seems to be more and more and earlier and earlier than, uh, and recently in the last few years, more and more fire bans. But I guess if you don't get rain, then you can't have fires and you can't expect to. So here's what I have for use today. I brought out my firebox freestyle with the hope that I could have a fire, but obviously the fire ban is on. So I'm using the firebox wood flame as it's now called since it's official release. And that's what I'll be cooking over. So I need to get that lit, turn the gas on, throw a spark in, turn the gas down, because you don't need a whole lot of heat with this. But what I do want to use is use the diffuser plate to diffuse the heat around. So there we go. Now that's going to start to heat up. And what I'm going to do is put my pan on. Oh, not like that. I have to do a little bit better job of balancing it. It'll be closed most of the time. I guess it's just now while I'm heating it up that I have it open like that. I think today I will throw in some ghee. Ghee or olive oil are my... I was going to say liquid's a choice. It is a liquid today too. Normally ghee is not a liquid, but it is today because the temperature is starting to rise here. Why ghee over olive oil? I guess some of it is the butter flavor that you get with ghee. And some of it is the fact that it's a really high temperature oil, not likely to burn, even though I am going to try to keep the, the temperature down on this fairly low. In fact, I can see the flame spreading out on the diffuser. I might just turn it down a tiny bit more. Yeah, that should be perfect. I'm also noticing that the pan is not perfectly level. Now, here's going to be the trick. In fact, I think what I'm going to do, folks, is just take it off camera for one second, put the ingredients in it, because I don't think I'm going to be able to balance it and do that all at the same time. So bear with me. I'm just going to be, all I'm doing is putting the ingredients into the pan, and then I'll come back into the pitcher. All right, there we go. Now, it's full, isn't it? It's absolutely chock-a-block full. Uh, I'm taking a second to form this patty, if you will. You can probably hear it sizzling. And the reason I'm doing this is it just makes it a little easier to flip. Now, honestly, when I you close the cover down on this and flip it over with the cover closed, that makes the job so much easier. But if you do this in any other fry pan, and by the way, you do have to kind of cook it covered, create some type of a mini oven doing this. Uh, if you do this with any other pan, you're going to want, wish you had formed it like that so you can get your flipper underneath it. All right, basically, that's all there is to it. Close that down. Now, having not cooked this outdoors, I'm not exactly sure how long it's going to take, but at home, it took me about five minutes to brown it up on the bottom, and then I flipped it over. It was primarily cooked at that point, so I flipped it over and gave it another two or three minutes, but at that point, you should be able to open it up and get a bit of a judge on how it's going. All right, I'll bring you back in a few minutes' time when it's time to flip it. You know, I didn't judge the time on this, but I'm thinking five minutes. All right, it looks like the edges are browning. Oh, yeah, see, the whole thing is moving inside of the pan. Excellent. Excellent. The reason I chose to use this pan is because this is the challenging part. If you don't have a pan like this, and you have just a regular fry pan, you're now going to have to put a plate or something on top, flip the whole thing upside down onto the plate, and then slide it back into your pan. That's the reason I chose this. Maybe I'm lazy or just afraid I'm going to lose my lunch, but how easy was that? How easy was that? Oh my goodness, look at that. Can you see that? I hope you can. One little bit of cheese probably stuck a little bit of it to the top of the pan here, which was the bottom of the pan. But all I have to do now is just give it a couple more minutes to brown up on the other side, 
and then we're ready for the taste test. I wish you could smell this. Man, this is beautiful. Oh, what am I gonna do here? Okay, so yes, a little tiny bit. Oh, it just popped right off anyway. A little tiny bit of it, the pie did stick when on the, that's the original side, the side that I had down towards the heat first. So it did stick a little bit, likely because of the cheese, because it does have a tendency to stick. Interesting, it actually stuck to the rivet where the handle is riveted on. Now, how am I going to get, the, oh, first off, let's flip it over. So this is the second side that came to the heat. Look at that. Wow, just lightly brown. And that's my, been my experience is the first side, the side you leave on the longest, is going to be the darker of the two sides. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. I could, probably could have let it go another couple of minutes, but it is done. But what I am going to do is I am going to give it two or three minutes to finish setting up, come down to an, eat an eatable temperature, and then I'll cut a piece out and we'll do the taste test. All right, I have my bandana slash napkin. I can just put on my lap here. It's still very hot, but I went ahead and cut a section out, like you can see a triangular section cut out here. I just wanted to look inside to make sure that it was cooked enough to eat. It is, but I could have left it a little longer. I'll be full disclosure, it's not liquid, but if I had left it a little tiny bit longer, it wouldn't have browned much more, and it would be just that much firmer. When you uh, do this properly and give it enough time, uh, you can actually cut this into pie sections and pick them up just like you could a piece of pie and eat them like that. When it's cold, this will still do that. It'll actually conge not conge congeal, uh, maybe. It'll actually harden and firm itself up so that you can pick it up and eat it by a bite. Now, that's huge, right? Could I eat all of that? Yeah, I probably could. I'm hungry enough. Should I eat all this? I'm going to eat at least half of this. Um, as you'll see when you look at the nutritional breakdown in the video description, there's not a lot of calories in here. It's a lot of fiber, it's a lot of protein, and it's a fair amount of fat, but it's not a lot of calories in total. Very low on the carbohydrates, especially when you remove the fiber and you get the neck carbs. And that's with my adaptation. Even if I had used wheat flour, um, it'd still be a relatively low carb meal just the same. But of course, I, I wanna reduce it right down to as low a carb as I can. All right, let's stop talking, Mark. See what we got here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. It's just as good as it is when I make it at home. Okay, for, for honesty, I think I could have put more garlic, more Tex-Mex in, maybe a little, something a little bit spicier. But, uh, oh yeah. Let's see if I can show you this. Probably see the steam coming off of it. And this is, like I said, about a 20 degree day now. Mmm. Oh my goodness. Yes, it's every bit as good as it was when I made it at home a couple times, but better because of course we made it in the woods. You know, I continue to be impressed with the, the wood flame from the firebox stove uh, store. You could use any gas stove to do this but because of that diffuser on top of this one, it makes it so that you don't get a central hot spot and get a burn. You can see it's browned nicely all over. No specific spot in the center of this has a dark burn from it. That doesn't always happen when you're using a gas stove, but the smaller the gas stove, the smaller the diameter of the burner, the more likely it is to happen. And of course, it depends on what fry pan you're using and everything. But this goes a long way to prevent that from happening. So. I think it's one of those, why didn't someone else think of this before? Now, diffusers have been around for a while. Uh, there's lots of makeshift diffusers made from titanium, stainless steel, ceramic, any number of things. But this one was built right into the design of the stove and works perfectly in conjunction with it. But that's not what this video is about, is it? You know, I might very well eat all of this. I know you're saying, you're kidding me, right? I don't know. It's not that, it's excellent tasting. Texture is great. Flavor is amazing. Yeah, okay. 
Let me finish off what I will eat of this, and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, you're not going to believe this. Or maybe you will believe me. I ate the whole thing. It was just that good and that easy to eat. I looked down, my plate was empty. I said I didn't believe, I couldn't believe myself that I ate it. I'm not overly full. I'm full. I'm satisfied, but I'm not stuffed. I didn't have to work to get all of that in me. And that's one of the nice things about this. I feel comfortable knowing that I had a good meal that wasn't like, too filling. Like I didn't eat so much that I have to worry about uh, having in excess, right? Okay, so a couple thoughts I'll just have before we close this video out. If you have given up on cabbage in whatever form that you've been using this in, whether it's boiled dinners like it was for me as a child, because you just don't like the smell or the flavor of the cabbage, or maybe it's the texture, uh, you want to look at it again because there are a lot of good reasons for it. Cabbage is one of the most nutritious of the vegetables and for most of the time, not all the time though, one of the least expensive that you can purchase in the store, especially when it's in season. It seems to last a long time in my fridge as well. And it, it can actually be used in so many different meals that, well, this is just one example of the things that I've been using it for at home. And it has changed the way I think about cabbage as part of my meal. A good, high fiber, low calorie, lots of minerals, lots of vitamins, lots of all the things you need in your meals. And this is especially true if you are on a low carb meal where you don't eat a lot of starchy meals and things anymore, or maybe you lean towards the carnivore side of things, but you want to have some vegetable in your, in your diet. This is one of those vegetables that's easy to add well, cook so well in so many different meals that it's really something you should be considering it. Uh, I'm glad I did. I'm glad I've used it in a number of meals now in cabbage soup, uh, uh, I guess a number of things, but this is just one of them. And I really like how the cabbage works in these meals. Now, just to go back over today's meal, I probably could have and should have left it in the pan on the heat a little bit longer. It would not have burnt it. It would not have caused a problem. It just would have maybe firmed up a little bit more than it was. Having said that, it was still cooked and plenty cooked. And had I let it sit and get cold, I could have cut it into slices that would have been something I could pick up with my hand. If that's something you like to do, maybe, you know, make it as a meal, then have it as a snack later. Yeah, it's easy to make. Now, what I did is I added a lot of things to the meal that it doesn't actually call for. Now, you know, the, the main ingredients primarily are the cabbage and the eggs. Onions comes next only because that's what was in the original recipe that I adapted it from. Spices, it's wide open, whatever you want to put in there. I put in ham and cheese. You certainly don't have to. If you want to amp it up, get a little bit more tr nutrition, make it a little bit more of a heavier meal. That's the way I did it. And still it wasn't all that bad. I mean, it wasn't all that heavy is what I should say. It's, a, it's worked out really well. And I'll be making this more often out here in the woods, at home, it's just that easy. It just takes a little bit of prep time to get the cabbage cut up. After that, it's easy to put together and cook as you saw. All right, if you have any comments or any questions or any suggestions of other meals you'd like to see me cook while I'm out here in the woods, please put those in the comment section below. As mentioned, I will put the recipe for the meal I just made in the video description below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.